Are we seeing the Ezekiel 38 war happening right now in Israel? What does it mean for the end times? What's going on in this country right now? We're seeing war in the north, war in the south, Iran is waking up. I'm in the Galilee right now and we're going to talk about everything because it's not just historical and prophetic, it's relevant to our times. Ezekiel 38 speaks of a great coalition led by Gog and Magog rising against Israel. Nations like Persia, now Iran, alongside others are prophesied to join this alliance. In the face of the recent heartbreaking events in southern Israel and surrounding region, many of you see this as a sign, a prelude to the prophecy's fulfillment. As rockets fly over Israel's skies and nations take side, I mean, America is moving its army closer to the Middle East, Russia's Putin came recently to visit the UAE and Saudi Arabia, China is watching, Western leaders are watching what's happening and getting ready for a large-scale war, and perhaps the words in Ezekiel make more sense and are more relevant to our time today. But let's approach this with both faith and discernment. As we correlate these events with Ezekiel's prophecy, it's crucial to remember, prophecy isn't just a playbook to current events. It's a guide to understanding God's ultimate plan. Ezekiel's prophecy, particularly in chapters 38 and 39, describes a war from the north, a critical detail that has led many to scrutinize current geopolitical shifts. Ezekiel 38:15 says, you will come from your place in the far north, you and many nations with you. This has been interpreted by some as pointing to the contemporary alliances that we are seeing being folded around Israel, particularly in the north behind me. In today's context, we see the complex interplay of powers in the Middle East with nations like Iran exerting influence through various groups and the ongoing conflicts in Syria and Lebanon, adding layers to this prophetic puzzle. For those of you new to this prophecy, Ezekiel 38 is basically a screenplay set in the future. It talks about a coalition of nations led by somebody named Gog that is going to come and attack Israel. But we know that this isn't just a physical battle, it's a spiritual warfare. And Israel is at its epicenter. It's as if the forces of the world converge upon this small nation, but the twist in the tale is divine intervention. But God's role in this prophecy is crystal clear. He stands with Israel, not just as a protector, but as a demonstrator of His power and promises. So what's the climax in this divine story? Well, scriptures are unequivocal about the outcome of this prophecy. In Ezekiel 38.4, it says, On the mountains of Israel you will fall. You see mountains behind me you and your troops and the nations with you. This sin as a prophetic assurance of Israel's victory over its adversaries, a testament of its resilience and divine backing. In the midst of current and future conflicts, this prophecy offers hope to many that Israel will not only endure, but emerge triumphant, a beacon of fulfillment of God's unwavering promises. Israel's role, as envisioned by many Christians, is central in the end times narrative. It's more than just a nation. It's a fulfillment of a biblical promise, a beacon of hope in a world seeking direction. And that's why your support, my friends, is not just appreciated, it's prophetic. Standing with Israel is standing for a future where peace and justice prevail as foretold in the scriptures. So in closing, let's unite in prayer, in prayer for the Middle East, for peace to prevail here, for victory over the evil, because this is a war between good and evil and goodness and justice shall prevail don't forget to subscribe to my youtube channel to stay connected to the latest updates coming from the holy land i appreciate you until next time